Vikings heavy hitter time outside our Beacon Hill studio. The very manly Peter Cadges going out with without the gloves. The very metrosexual Cosmo Macero wearing the Glintons this morning. Nice to see. And a half. <laughs> What's the wife going to wear now that you've borrowed her Glintons? <laughs> Come on, I've been wearing these convertible mitten-type gloves for years. <laughs> She's so weak. So uh, do my 10-year-olds. Uh, exactly, 11-year-olds. Exactly, exactly the point. Actually, you just got one of them on. I'm missing, missing the other one. <laughs> That's a good look. Let's see that one again. There you go. <laughs> Question number one. Are we going to be talking about Sarah Palin? You betcha. She was back in full effect over the weekend, Cosmo. And if you talk to any liberals since her appearance at the Tea Party Convention, one thing you know is you know, she is still that? goes <laughs> right up their backside. She really does. You know, Sarah Palin, she electrifies conservative middle America. And, boy, she bugs the, bugs the heck out of the liberals on both coasts. And I think that's the way it's going to be. She's going to be in your face on Fox News. She's going to be in a, your, your face. What's the problem? Is it the, the accent? The Tea Party is it the good looks? Is it the... She's just a woman that doesn't like getting pushed around. What is it that gets I, your I, people going? I think, I, think they, I think they just don't like that so much of America is enamored with, with Sarah Palin. And um, I think she's not going... It's, it's clear she's not going anywhere. Uh, and she's going to be there for the next uh, uh, couple of years being part of the public conversation. As the resident liberal on the panel, Peter, did... How's that Hopi change you thing working out for you? Did that bother you or did you appreciate it? I, uh, I thought, there she goes again. She's a genius. Look, Sarah Palin may be ignorant, but she's not stupid. She is, you know, a perfect exemplar of trailer park feminism. She speaks to... <laughs> How's that for damning need, with fan praise? Need, need I say more? <laughs> Listen, sh- the line between celebrity and political figure has long since been blurred. She's, you know, she's indeed, surfing indeed, it like a genius. Indeed, it was it was blur, it was blurred more, blurred more than anyone by uh, by President Obama. I mean, he's the, he is the preeminent rock star politician. Well, Peter said uh, she's stupid. It's arguable. No, no, no. I said she's ignorant, not stupid. Well, the question is, is the palm uh, palm prompter. Cosmo, I see you've got a couple of things jotted down through the hair on your palm. I can't quite read it, but oh, everyone should get over themselves. So she, what's the problem? It says find other glitten. That's what you need to write. There there are bigger problems with Sarah Palin than the fact that she wrote on her hand. Does it say something about her though that she's writing things like lift America's spirits on her hand? Otherwise, she would forget to mention. You know what? You know what says more about her? The fact that the day after she wrote hi mom on her hand. And she, she let did. the media say it. Look, she's going to be around for a, lot of, a long time. Get used to it. Have some fun with her. When she says, on those rare occasions when she says something intelligent, if it's worth taking <laughs> there issue he with goes again. Uh, take issue with it. You know, her celebrity is not going to diminish. Is she a menace? I don't mean. I don't mean. You to, bet she I don't is. mean to pile on, but it, it says she probably cheated on. On her biology test, you know that's what it says. I I, I think there's something uh, in, in endearing about it that she, you know, uh, puts the crib notes in her hand and then quickly sort of makes a joke of it when she gets caught doing it. She was pretty blatant in that interview. So let's can I do this anymore? Can let, I, yeah, let's I, see I what our next hand. topic's <laughs> going to be here, Cosmo. If you could hold that out for me, that'd be great. Tax cuts, investment, and in government. Accounting. You don't have Mayor Lantigua on there. You should, or Rep Lantigua. <laughs> He's front and center up on Beacon Hill today. The Mayor of Lawrence. And the rep of Lawrence. Uh, Beacon Hill is going to consider whether or not to give Lawrence $35 million in bailout money. Several reps are saying they're not going to vote for that money unless Lantigua gives up one of his two gigs. Peter, the question is this. Who looks worse right now, Lantigua for keeping both jobs or these reps for grandstanding on Lawrence's money? Well, I, before you asked that question, I would have thought it would be impossible for the legislature to, to look worse than they are. But the reps who are grandstanding look worse. Look, the city needs the money. They should get the money. There's nothing illegal about him having both jobs. Should he hold both jobs? I would think the people of Lawrence would want a full-time mayor. But it, it's a tempest in the teapot. When you hear that, it's, it's, it's not, it's not incredible, incredibly unusual for someone to serve as, say, a city councilor and a rep at the same time. It's happening, happening now in a couple of different cities. But a mayor of, of a town that's it's, about to go into receivership? It's, it's or certainly could. a next step and a big step in some communities like Lawrence to become mayor. And I would agree, Lawrence deserves a full-time mayor. But 
Peter's right. There's nothing illegal about it, or I don't, I don't even think improper to advocate for your city if you're in that position. Quickly, does the red, the legislature grandstanding on this make you side with Lantigua a little more, or does it affect you at all? Yeah, you know, I suppose when the legislature goes after someone, I'm almost always on their side. Um, I don't think it has an effect. Uh, let's talk Super Bowl quickly, because Cosmo, you're a guy who I've known for a lot of years, and you always tell me about the who. You love the who. What was your impressions of their performance? I thought it was a good set. I would have wanted to see maybe a couple of different songs than the expected sort of typical set, but I thought it was great. Kind of wondered if Pete Townsend would pull the slide across the stage on his knees, but he's over 60, and he probably would have got electrocuted. Does he have a real hip? (laughs) I mean... That would have have been big, but I thought the set was great. 12 minutes of... Power pack a lot of people ripping this performance. They can't hit the notes anymore. They look terrible. This was not good rock and roll, Peter. Your take. That that's all true, but it's beside the point. <laughs> you know, this is you know, granddad and his pals get up to you know make a couple of million bucks and play before the kiddies. You, you know, let's put it this way. It was no 9-11 concert, but who expects it? You know, half the people watching it were probably half in the tank anyway. I've seen, so. I've seen Paul McCartney live at a Super Bowl. This beat that, even, even though I was in the living room, so... Well, if Howard Stern were judging this performance, what would he say? Because we now know that Stern does want to replace Simon Cowell on American Idol. Is this a good idea for the network, Cosmo? You know, the show... I contend that the show is still really about the talent, but if you're of the belief that it's about that one uh, off-the-charts judge, he's not a bad pick. He probably spent a lot of time playing uh, Butt Bongo Fiesta, but uh, we'll see what yeah. happens. <laughs> playing, among other things. I'm guessing you'd rather have Palin on there. Well, I was going to say, no, there's a certain beautiful symmetry here. You know, Palin on the national stage, you know, in, in Stirred, but on... on on a bigger national stage. On a, actually, on a bigger than You know, Palin and Stern, together at last. I mean, Cosmo, i got like 20 seconds. Why don't you air riff me a little who as we go to break? I usually don't air riff. You air guitar? <laughs> sure, give me something. I don't, I don't, I don't, you know. does what he song re- should they have played? D- does he really have to? I would have opened up, I opened up with, um, uh, with Can't Explain, which is sort of their power-packed first hit. How's that? I part? like Who Are Let's You. Let's hear the riff. I, 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 I like uh, Let's hear uh, it. Bob O'Reilly. Let's hear it. Not a hoop fan. Cosmo Macero, Vanilla Associates, getting real weak. It's the Glintons talking. Peter Cadges of the Boston Phoenix. Then ahead.